Welcome to the Connected Families Podcast, your listening guide to parenting with peace and connection. I'm Stacey Bellward, here with co-founder of Connected Families, Jim Jackson. Welcome to today's episode of the Connected Families Podcast. Welcome, Jim. Welcome, Stacy. Yeah, we're in the middle of our 10-part series on what should I do when, and we've covered all sorts of different topics. We still have some to do, but topics such as what should I do when my child won't calm down? What should I do when my child hits me? Mm. What should I do when my child wants to quit their music lesson? All sorts of things that parents are dealing with each day. What should I do when my kids won't stop fighting with each other? We're going to talk about that today. Well, what do you know that's today's topic? And Lynn <laughs> and I one. did a course about this some time back. So guess who we've welcomed to, as Connected Families special staff guest today? Well, hello, everybody. <laughs> Hi, Lynn. And we're glad to have you back with us. We do have an online course on this topic, it's, don't we? It's true. We do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, we have a lot more to say than we have time in this podcast. But let's see if we can give folks 20 minutes or so of wisdom yep. and knowledge that will help them yep. in their relationships with their kiddos to, to raise the kind of kids that that in the big picture of things get along and are respectful and honoring and know how to resolve conflict. Yeah, because we know there's conflict, don't we? Yeah, well, there, there is in most families. Lynn and I, of course, we don't... <laughs> We, we, what? <laughs> Lynn's laughing, Jim. Sometimes, she knew where you were going Sometimes with I that. think the older we get, as we revert to some of those deeply held frameworks that God has still got to work on in us, our conflicts continue to emerge. I just don't get it. But oh. we're, we love each other more all the time. Yeah. Indeed. Well, welcome. Welcome, Lynn. You know, we start each episode with a quick answer for the, for the parent that's in the car for 10 minutes and they can't get the whole 20 minutes. We want to give them something they can use right now. So if the question was, and it is today, what should I do when my kids fight? What would your quick 30-second answer be for that person? It would be to quickly calm yourself first. Take that extra breath. It'll serve you well in the long run. Then enter with confidence and empathy for both kids. Mm, Both kids. Underlined, both. Empathy Mm. for both. Empathy for both. And then coach them toward their own solution. So you mean it's not always the oldest child's fault? Correct. <laughs> as much as we might want to pin the blame on that poor Ooh, little boy, rascal. That was, that was, mm. I'd hear the fighting off in the distance and I would immediately would know what happened without having seen a thing. Yep. And I'd have the verdict before I even rounded the corner. Yep. Mm-hmm. And yep. that didn't usually go well for yep. me or for the kids. We, we round the corner armed with two pistols full of our judgments about that one child. Mm. And it spirals down from there. Mm-hmm. So calm ourselves, take a step back. You know, that's that's a hard one. These kids are fighting. They're mistreating each other. They're using harsh words. I sh- should stop this right away, shouldn't I? Well, if you do, then what do the kids learn? Well, I suppose they learn that um, I have to stop it right away in order for it to stop. Right. They're dependent on you. They learn they have no skills. They learn they have no power. How young or old, I guess as the case may be, ought children be before we start teaching them the principles we're about to talk about? Uh, well, our daughter was about a year and a half when well, we started I, I remember that. <laughs> well, <laughs> teaching her. Yeah. It was like a visual image in my mind of Daniel was this big, powerful person. And so in conflict, my initial approach was to go in and try to squash him with my big power mm-hmm. to get him down on Bethany's level. But really, it was reverse of that. It's like, let him speak for himself, and let me strengthen her and elevate her to a level playing field with him. Are you talking about she was one and a half at the time? She was like 18, and it was simple. 18 to, months. 18 months. <laughs> yep. <laughs> she was 18. Oh <laughs> she, she was, was 18. Yeah. Months. And at 18 years old, just before she went to college, we had a crash course on conflict resolution. <laughs> no, she was 18 months. <laughs> so this... <laughs> this information is for everyone at every age. Is that what you're saying? It is. It Just is. think in terms of how can I lift the weaker child up to be on a level playing field with the stronger child. Yeah. Okay. And that's an encouraging job versus I have to squash this aggressive older child, put him in his place uh, in order to bring peace. And it's not peace. Yep. Okay. Which, which even with the 18-month-old reinforces that she's a victim and helpless and can't take care of herself. And so we knew right away with Bethany Let's figure out a way to give her a voice. And she Mm -hmm. didn't have hardly a vocabulary, but it's like, I'm sad. Yeah, so hold up a minute because I'm kind of like, what? She was 18 months old. And how old was Daniel? So we can set the stage. Like four, right? Three. Three three and a half. Three and a half. Yeah. Three and a half or four. She was 18 months, a year and a half. 
you got to just stop right there. Give us a few things. How did you teach an 18-month-old? I had done a lot of conflict resolution before that, which was just come in and power over Daniel and tell him all the things he was doing wrong and give him a consequence. And then she just stands there and cries helplessly with big yeah. puppy dog tears. And the whole dynamic was really unhealthy. Yeah. And she might have been closer to two. I mean, who can remember back yeah, that age? Sure. <laughs> but she was young. And because I remember how I would do it would be to rush in to, instead of glaring at Daniel, which was my initial response. I'd yeah. just go in, I'd pick her up. She's usually in tears by now because he's whacked her. So I go in, I pick her up and comfort her. That calms me down because I'm in comfort mode, not confrontation mode. Then I just start giving her really simple word choices. Yeah. Bethany, are you sad or mad? Mm -hmm. I sad, you yeah, know, yeah. and then or I mad. Usually it was I sad because yeah. she was more of a victim mentality. And then I say, oh, OK, you can tell Daniel that. So she's looking at me. He's looking at both of us and he's mad and defensive. And then I just say, OK, you can tell Daniel that. Daniel, I sad. So it was yeah. that level where we started. And sometimes even far beyond that, I would go back to default of rushing in like the angry bull. Daniel, why are you doing that? And I'd grab him by the shoulders. And then I'd go, <laughs> that was stupid and didn't get me anywhere. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mm -hmm. But that was the, that was sort of the rudiments that started when she was under two. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was giving her word choices yeah. and letting her pick so that it wasn't just yeah. me putting words in her mouth. Well, and you also then with Daniel, would he, she, she would De Bethany would say, I'm sad. And then you would ask Daniel to repeat what he just heard Bethany say. How does Bethany feel because of what you did? And then he'd look at the floor and he'd feel, you know, then then his countenance would change, sad, maybe he was ashamed, you know, I don't know. Mm -hmm. But little by little, mm -hmm. you know, given the two of them a, a language to talk with each other about this so that, you know, as they emerged even into school age, mm -hmm. right, they, yeah. were, they were resolving conflict kind of on their own. Like, mm -hmm. you guys got this or do you need some help? No, we'll do it. Yeah. Well, I remember one time yeah. sitting with a guest whom I didn't know well, and the kids came in and they were arguing and they were wanting to recruit me into their conflict. And mom, she did this and he did that and everything. And I just said, okay, take a deep breath, go in and sit on opposite sides of our bed, which is like the demilitarized zone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then um, just figure it out. I know you can do it. So just right there, I'm breathing calm and peace and yeah. encouragement into yeah. the process and figure it out. And solve it until you can meet in the middle for a hug. Yep. And that was the instruction. So it, we, we continued the chat with this friend. And then about five to eight minutes later, they emerge and they're laughing and, you know, kind of high five. And, and she just looks at me and her jaw drops and go, how in the world did that happen? Yeah. But it was yeah. a process yeah. of training kids that there's no shame in having an argument. We're all sinners. Yeah. We're all messed up. Yeah. And this is just a journey to receive God's grace and learn how to resolve that conflict so we can keep our hearts connected with each other. I love other. that. I love there's a peace that you bring to it then, right? As the parents. Absolutely. You've set your anxiety aside. I don't have to control the solution. Yeah. I don't have to shame the aggressor. Yeah. I can empower them to understand each other and solve their problem. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's beautiful. And it's you are safe with me. It's the start of our, our framework yep. um, that we teach at Connected Families a lot, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. it's the first part of this course we mentioned at the outset right. that Lynn and I have, have put together for everybody mm -hmm. about sibling conflict. Yep. And uh, in the context of this course, we teach a, what we call a peace process yep. that begins with, with the calming calm, and the safety and the yeah. understanding each other and then calm, understand, solve, and then bada, Cele bada bing, celebrate. Celebrate, right. Celebrate. Yep. celebrate. So, so, but there's not much to celebrate sometimes. Well, it really feels like that sometimes, but it's really an important piece. And sometimes, you know, it's a messy process helping kids, you know, facilitating their their actually solving the problem mm -hmm. and we have lots of practical ideas in the course yeah the, the the celebrate at the end is still probably the most important piece besides yeah starting kids off with that sense of safety and and love from us uh -huh. because whatever we put our focus on we get more of so mm. if we f look for something that went well in the process yep. and then celebrate it just a little something right? right and the brain research shows that that actually diminishes their sense of how bad the conflict was. 
when we can find something to celebrate, it, it, it's like it highlights their skill, it fertilizes that process, mm -hmm. it encourages their hearts. And so often our kids would go off and play really well together mm -hmm. after they'd had a conflict instead of like it all simmers under the surface because one feels really resentful of how the parent dealt with it and then they come back and they just attack as soon as their parent's not looking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's the cycle that happens when we come in and dominate with our big angry energy. Yep. As we come in as guides, encouragers, um, to help them in their process, and then we celebrate whatever one little thing went yeah. better. It's like, yeah. well, there were some really big, powerful words in that conversation, but nobody used their hands. High five! You know, yeah. it's that kind of a thing. Yeah, and there's some brain science around there. I know we love bringing brain science into it. Right, right. What is that? Whatever we focus on, we get more of. Yeah. That's really the bottom line. Whatever we focus on, we get more of. Yep. So if we instill in one child, you're the bully in this house, and mm -hmm. we have that terrible label word in our mind, yep. even if we don't say it, yep. but that's what our actions communicate, then that's what's going to grow in that child. We're growing that identity in that child. Mm -hmm. If we look at this as conflict is really hard, especially when you're talking about two developing you know, underdeveloped yet brains, brains yes. trying to deal with context is so hard and kids are going to make tremendous mistakes. Mm -hmm. But if we can just gain a little ground, that's raising up people to be yeah. ambassador for God's peace. Yeah. And, and all three of our kids in different situations, as we train them like this, have jumped into the middle of difficult situations and been peacemakers. In fact, yeah. one time our oldest son, Daniel, who was in the middle of most of the conflicts in our family, <laughs> he was really instrumental in a big conflict in his high school between students and teachers because he kept he had learned to keep a cool head in conflict, figure mm -hmm. out how to facilitate both sides, mm -hmm. you know, find the commonalities, encourage mm -hmm. people. And he was really used by God in that situation. I love that. Well, and when you celebrate... There's this dopamine rush, right? I learned that from you, Lynn, mm -hmm. right? So and Absolutely. We like to say, what, dopamine is the I want to do it again. It was okay. Yeah. It was good, right, right? right? So when you get to the end of all of that conflict and and the solution and then to the celebrate mm -hmm. and you have that dopamine rush then, maybe the conflict isn't so scary in the future then. Like right. you feel like, oh, we're going to get through it. We're yeah. all going to be okay. Yeah. And we'll celebrate in the end again. And it's really such a statement of grace. It's like... God's grace is enough for our messes. We can mm. ask for forgiveness for all the stuff that we did wrong, but then we get to celebrate how he showed up in our midst, how he helped us, that his grace just loves us even though we are yeah. so yeah. messy. Yeah. It's like yeah. we didn't have to get it perfect. Mm -hmm. Jesus got it perfect on the cross. Yeah. We can celebrate the ways that he showed up and helped us through this process. Yeah, yeah, I love that. I love it's the gospel. The way we help our kids navigate their conflict and the reconciliation and their restoration with one another mm -hmm. in the context of their closest relationships mm -hmm. is the best picture we can give them of what the gospel is mm -hmm. about, albeit very imperfect. Mm -hmm. it, it tills the soil of their hearts. It creates a hunger to know true restoration, to know true reconciliation, mm -hmm. to know about repenting of what we've done wrong and going and making it right with mm -hmm. one another. And ultimately, it's our job to do that with God, in relationship with God. So w when we as parents just do this quick fix mentality for our kids' conflict, don't talk to each other that way. That's not okay. You say you're sorry or you can't go be with your friends. Yeah. And we don't give them the skills to, A, just understand the natural effects of how they treated another human being and the broken relationship that happened as a result of it mm -hmm. and the work that's needed uh, of repentance, of confession, of mm -hmm. apology mm -hmm. in order to make that, that, that relationship at home right. Um, if we don't do that work, then we just teach them that this is an easy thing and, and it's transactional. And if you just say the right words and go through the motions, you can go on with life. Yeah. It's not enough to just go, sorry, sorry. Yeah. We need to put our hearts back together because mm -hmm. that's the level that God deals yep. with. He wants our hearts connected with each other. And that's such a good agenda that he's got for us. Yeah, yeah. And I know you have a great little video in the sibling conflict course, mm -hmm. like showing that visually in a way that you yep. can teach the kids that has been really powerful for people. So Lynn, have you got a recent story of parents you've coached through sibling conflict that can kind of illustrate the steps that you're... Um, that, that you're talking about here? Yeah, I coached a couple with pretty young kids, uh, like a three or four-year-old boy and a five, six-range-year-old girl. 
and taught them how to teach their kids the peace process. And it was messy and it didn't look at all textbook like, you know, in the course you'll kind of see a nice way to do it. And it was way sloppier than that, but they just helped their kids learn mm-hmm. to just express what they were feeling and kind of work it out and, um, and then solve it. And then they celebrated every time they were done. And then one time the dad, who was not as like into this. Yeah, he was wired a little more like me. I just want to solve this quickly and yep. get on with life. And I don't have a lot of time for this process stuff. Yeah. So instead of going in as a coach, he went in as a judge and he goes, Austin, that is not okay. Go to the, you know, you treated your sister badly. Go to the timeout chair. His sister comes to daddy and says, daddy, we want to do the peace process. Don't send Austin to time out. <laughs> <laughs> so, so then it's just like, okay, what's everybody feeling? How can we solve this? Mm-hmm. You know, and then mm-hmm. celebrating. Mm-hmm. And she just felt so good about being able to do the peace process mm-hmm. yeah. with her uh, younger brother. Yeah. So we calm ourselves yeah. before we can help our kids get calm. Then we empathize. We understand. So it's calm, empathize, understand. Um, and then that helps our kids calm down. And then from understand, we go to solve. When they solve it, instead of going, oh, phew, good, I can get on with my day. Yep. Then it's that celebrate piece yep. because that's what fertilizes the whole process. Right. Yeah, that's that dopamine thing that yep. you're talking about, mm-hmm. Stacey. Yeah. So the celebrate is you find some little glimmer of yep. goodness in that whole process. Yeah. And then we high five and encourage kids and yeah. help them to feel good about what yeah. they're learning. Yeah. Wow, kids, you listened a little better that time than last time, or this time yeah. you kept your hands to yourself. That's yeah. right. Or this time you kept your voice down. Yeah. Or, there were wow. some big angry words there, but you didn't hit. Yeah. That was awesome. High five. Yeah, yep. you guys That's are saying high fives all the great. time. You know what we did in our house once? What? Feet fives. Feet fives. <laughs> yeah. Let's do a feet it was, five. It was, you know, the feet yeah. fives, both of them, it was or fun. let's dance the jig or let's, you know, whatever it might whatever be. It whatever it was. Whatever works in go your house. Get, go get a cup of chocolate milk or something. Yeah. I have to ask one question as we're wrapping up here. And that is um, a question I remember asking you a long time ago. Do you do the peace process through every little conflict? No. Because you could be doing it all day long. Right, right. So how do you, you know... (laughs) <laughs> yeah, that's a you know that's a hard question to answer. If you do it for the for the really significant ones, mm-hmm. then you know you're really covering the ground. Sometimes kids can't do it for the really significant ones because there's so much energy. There was one family mm. that just started with sort of the safe thing. Their yeah. ki- their two daughters were so volatile that it was explosive, and they just started working on safe just yep. separate instead yep. of continuing to hit each other just separate and we'll celebrate when you just separate it varies there's no shame in it we're all learning yeah just you know trying yep. to figure this out together and bring god's grace to our messes yeah. amen i love the the online course the sibling conflict online course go to our show notes you're going to get information there mm-hmm. also our website connectedfamilies.org they can see it. Lots of information on the sibling mm. conflict online course. Great. So if so, you listen to this twenty minutes and you feel like you want more, that's head over there. A lot mm-hmm. more there, and tons of resources on that course too. Mm-hmm. Extras that are added on Fabulous. for reconciliation and others. Well, this Thanks, is fun. Thanks, Jim and Lynn. It has been fun. We didn't even fight. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. There was no argument over how this episode should go. So go. score oh. we've learned. All right. Thanks for joining us, everyone. Until next time. Thank you for joining us for this episode of the Connected Families Podcast. We hope you got tips that you can use in your parenting today. Please subscribe and leave us a positive review so other families can find us and learn how to parent with peace and connection.